Hello everyone, good to be talking to you today from a different angle in our sanctuary. Uh, I'll explain to you why a little bit later, but in the meantime, look at that great view all the way up to the ark there. Um, so talking this week about Parashat Toldot, I want to begin with a story, a true story, about David Ben-Gurion. David Ben-Gurion was given an offer by some wicked people called the British in, 19, in the 1930s, before the establishment of the state of Israel, they offered a particular state for the Jews, but much smaller than the one that we eventually got, and even smaller than the one that had been promised by Lord Balfour in 1917. And Ben-Gurion had to decide, am I going to take whatever I can get, or am I rather going to hold out and maybe get more, a bigger state. And he consults with a trusted advisor, a guy called Yitzhak Tabenkin. And Tabenkin says, I'll sleep on it. And he comes back the next morning and he says to Ben-Gurion, don't take it. Ben-Gurion says, I will take your advice, but tell me, who were the people that you consulted with? And Tabenkin replied, I consulted with my grandfather and my grandson. My grandfather who passed away 10 years ago, and my grandson, who has not yet been born. You see, when Tabenkin reflected on this huge question for the Jewish people, he asked himself, what tradition am I a part of? What do I owe the previous generations? And he asked himself, where am I going as a people? What do I owe the future generations, even those who are not yet born? This week's parasha, we meet, the truth is we had him before in earlier parishes, but we see a little bit more of the character of Isaac. Isaac, the second of our patriarchs, who seems to be much less creative and much more, less dominant as a personality than his father Abraham or his son Jacob. And yet we learn something about Isaac in this week's parasha, that Isaac sees that the, that the, uh, the Philistines have filled in the wells that had been built and dug by Isaac's father Abraham, and Isaac redigs those wells that his father had originally dug, and he calls them by the same names that his father had given them. In this we see an aspect of what makes Isaac tick, of what drives him. He is a person, unlike Abraham, who comes into a world and says, I'm part of a tradition. What do I owe to the previous generations? When I reflect on my life, how do I see my life as continuing that which was started before me? And we see in a very active parasha, Isaac's relationship with Jacob as well. And at the end of the parasha, he instructs Jacob as to who he should marry because he wants to make sure that he's taking care of the next generation as well. And this is what we see ourselves as Jews as doing in this world. Whenever we ask ourselves the big questions of our lives, what are our values? What do we live for? How do we behave? We ask ourselves, what do we learn and what do we owe from the previous generations? And what do we want to pass on to? And what do we owe the future generations? So I hope we can take that idea away with us. I'm delighted to tell you that we have many Mazel Tovs in the community over the last week. We want to wish a Mazel Tov to our president, Polly, and to Ted on the birth of their baby granddaughter. Mazel Tov to you. Mazel Tov to uh, Isabel and Gil Perez on the birth of their grandson, Harrison Max. And he, in fact, has his bris in this very sanctuary this morning, which is why the bimmer is not where the bimmer normally is on the stage. It's over here, and that's why I'm standing over here. Mazel tov to Isabel and Gil. Mazel tov also to Marlene and Alan Spora. Baby granddaughters, twin granddaughters, uh, sorry, one granddaughter and one grandson, twins. Um, mazel tov to you. And mazel tov as well, I think it happened since our last video to Judy and Howard Yankovic on the birth of their baby grandson. So a lot of mazel tov, a lot of simcha, and I hope that they, everyone watching and everyone in the community is sharing this simcha, which we all need. And it's not just the uh, the grandparents and the parents and the families, but it's the entire Beth Ora family, which are rejoicing with these families. And it's very, very special. Special. Uh, I want to wish you a Shabbat Shalom, but I do want to remind you, of course, that um, we have next Tuesday, we're very excited, 2 p.m., to be joined by the former Israeli ambassador to the UN, who is giving questions and answers exclusively for our community, 
but we need your questions. Today, Thursday, send me your questions, Rabbi Noff at Bethara.org, because without questions, he's not going to give any answers. So I hope that we can count on you to bring your questions about Israel to the ambassador. We look forward to seeing you then, as well as all the other activities that we have in person and on Zoom between now and then, and indeed the other activities which we are planning, which we're already advertising, and more to come as we start this new season in Congregation Bethara. Wishing you all Shabbat Shalom.